Good evening. Well, um, welcome. <laughs> welcome to Talking Songs with me, Roland Jones. Um, uh, a bit of a technical faff going on at the moment with Mr. Harry Stafford, and um, I seem to have lost him. So what I'm going to do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play you a tune um, and then see if he can join us shortly at the moment. I'm not quite sure what's happening there. Uh, but anyway, we shall kick off with something. Calm down now, I think I'm panicking a little bit, aren't I? So, yeah. This is called Fifty Shades of Blues. Fifty Shades of Blue. I think you can probably imagine where the uh, <laughs> where the inspiration for that title came from. So um, yeah, so here we are. Um, and I shall now see if I can uh, raise Mr. Stafford. Hey there, Mr. Stafford. Oh, can you hear me? Hey, oh, I can hear you. I can't see you though, mate. That's the trouble. Oh right. You're, uh, oh, now you're back. Now you're okay. back. Marvelous, <laughs> marvelous, marvelous. How are you doing? I'm very well, thanks. I, I hope the um, the internet uh, 
uh, line is good because of course downstairs my mm. my youngest is having a scout meeting on a similar zoom so i hope we're not fighting for broadband uh, but, that's uh, a possibility that is but, a possibility uh, if that happens you're going to have to launch into song until it, <laughs> until it comes back yes i should be an emergency song singer singer yes <laughs> so, i'm sure you have many oh um <laughs> yeah one or two so harry what about you and music then? What, when did it all start for you? Uh, well, I am a, a, a child of punk rock, I suppose. <laughs> and um, I think uh, I, I think would have been about 14 or so. And um, I suppose I was listening to a very difficult guitar licks on Led Zeppelin and Genesis and uh, uh, Thin Lizzy and all those bands. And being a bit of a novice guitarist, suddenly somebody played me a Ramones album. Right. And now suddenly I learned how to play, exactly, I learned how to play bar chords. And of course, uh, it was just mm -mm, mm -mm, up and down the neck. And suddenly the the whole world of uh, music I could play and sing along to opened up. And of course it was punk rock as well. And uh, I think that was was the moment that I suddenly realized that I wanted to be a, a guitarist. Right. And I wanted to be a musician, and I wanted to be in a band. Yes. Moreover, I think <laughs> that was that was the big thing. Yeah, it wasn't just a case of playing it in your bedroom. No, I wanted yeah, to be yeah. in a band. Yeah. The problem, problem is, we're back to playing in the bedroom these days. That's for <laughs> six months now. Oh uh, yeah. Which is yeah. Thank, thank God it. it uh, I, I would have. Uh, I wouldn't have broken me at the age of fourteen if I. Had, Suddenly, I had this thought I could never play on, on stage again. That would have been awful. Yes, it's it's kind of. I have to say it. It has crossed my mind that uh, <laughs> this may be the future. We are now the future. But let's not look at it for, for, on a, on a, on a <laughs> negative note. Let's try and do it positively. So um, yeah, so that was the band. Now you you recorded as as the Inca Babes, yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, and, um, Inca Babes. Yeah, that was that was the the, the first the babies. Babies, yeah, Inca Babies. That, that could be almost like a female uh, tribute band to uh, the Inca Babies. <laughs> yes, <laughs> sadly they don't exist, but uh, who knows? Who knows? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that we we started that band uh, uh, in 1983, right. and uh, we went. We had a little bit of success in the 80s, and then disbanded in 1988, and got it all going again in in, in 2007. Uh, right. In order to um, put out some more records and uh, right. get get going where, where we left off, I guess was yeah. the thing to do. Well, I mean, I, I I don't I think I did tell you at the time when I was in Nashville four years ago, and I was talking to the um, the guy who ran this bar where I was kicking, <laughs> and uh, he said, "Oh, you live in Manchester? Do you know the the Inca Babes?" Uh, babies. <laughs> I said, I do actually. I happen to know the keyboard player. Although you were the guitar player at that time. Guitar player then, yeah. I know. Uh, I'm, I, I'm, I'm to the rest of the guys. Well, uh, let's have a thing now. Um, it's just me left in terms of playing in the band. Mm. Uh, where the, 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 the one has passed on, sadly. Um, and uh, the others, oh, let me think now, Pete's somewhere. He was the drummer. He's in Nottingham, I believe. Uh, mm. Mike is in Monmouth, being a mm. farmer. And uh, and then who were there? There was various other other players. We had we had guitarists and guest drummers. But yes, the the four. Oh, Alan Brown. Uh, he was he left to join Big Flame, which was an extraordinary kind yeah. of experimental kind, really off out of the off the scale kind of uh, <laughs> funk band, yeah. uh, extraordinary band. And he left uh, for them. And uh, so yes, it's, it's just me really. Just right. the last last man standing, as it were. <laughs> There's a song there somewhere. So, <laughs> so, so now, now you, you're. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen you play guitar. I think I've only ever seen you play keyboards. Um, uh, yes, it's uh, it's it's, it's but is believable. Kind of thing? Is, but is that <laughs> is that something that you've only started doing in the last sort of five ten years, or did you always play a bit of keyboards? Uh, I had lessons when I was uh, twelve and oh, didn't right. take to it. I was I was getting told to play Schubert and Bartok, mm. and while Schubert and Bartok are wonderful, not for a twelve-year-old, no. and uh, I couldn't get to grips with it. All. Whereas had uh, they told me, you know, you can play so sort of maybe some some sort of you know. Oops, that's out of key. It's all of. 
say a bit of boogie woogie, I would have loved it. I would have gone, wow, yeah. this is this is something great. But no, I had to I had to learn classical pieces, which is understandable in a way. And when, how well, I, I, I did I did the same. I have to say, I I went through the same. And uh, then one night before, in fact, night before one of my exams, um, I went to my cousin's house and he had two guitars and he taught me to play it, play eight chords. Uh, and after that, I still have a piano, um, but I now play it more like a, a guitar player because I play it in chords, you know, rather than reading notes. Well, I hate to say it, but I'm, I'm rather similar. Um, <laughs> you, well, no, because you play guitar for, for 20, 30 years and you come to the piano and of course you think chords and then the other hand sort of does a little bit of melody yeah. and then you play a chord and melody so yes actually the way i play i've actually had to uh, unlearn a lot of that and i had a very good teacher who told me that i was playing like a barbarian to use their <laughs> words and i should learn a bit more of an actual classical sense um and so I've, I've done a little bit of that. I, yeah. Unfortunately, it's it's a hard habit to lose, but yeah. I'm, I'm doing my best. And I've been doing it now for, I started proper, as in played my first gig in 2015. And I don't think you can really play the piano until you've actually played it in anger in front of an audience Absolutely. and yeah. sung, sung a song yeah. uh, to the full capacity of your lungs in the same way that you would, you would pick up a guitar and play. Yeah. And uh, that is how I learned. And it's taken a while and I'm yeah. still, still getting there, but you know, yeah, yeah. I'm uh, feel a bit more confident. <laughs> okay. Well, on that note, so no pun intended, I think it's, uh, what about singing this a song? Okay. Right. Um, I shall play a track off my, uh, my recent album, which is called, uh, what's it called? It's called Gothic Urban Blues. Oh, look, there's a picture oh. of it. Uh, <laughs> An audiovisual. <laughs> yes. And this is called Black Rain. Okay, here we go. <laughs>
excellent. <laughs> I think I've said this to you before that you've got a, 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 a I would say unique style, but it's, it's there's a mix of this. This this I think I, I described it to you. It's, there's a, a sort of British eccentricity about it. And I mean that in the most positive sense. It sounds, sounds a bit to me like Tom Waits meets Viv, Viv Stanshall. Um, well, I will, I will take that, uh, <laughs> take that and ride with it and celebrate it. Uh, yeah, no, uh, absolutely. <laughs> so that's been the next question, really. Is what, what, who do you, who do you sort of admire and, and like as songwriters? Well, uh, Tom Waits, absolutely, um, and the fact that uh, I just love the idea of a, an old guy sitting uh, in a bar with a piano and oh, sort of yeah. growling into into the keyboards and with a song of woe or yeah. some uh, heartfelt blues that are yeah. sort of pouring into the atmosphere. <laughs> um, and then at the same time, you've got more aggressive players like Nick Cave and you've got... Yeah. Um, some amazing uh, Moose Allison. Now Moose Allison, wonderful. Moose Allison, who uh, I know you love him. Mm. Um, I was listening to him the other day, and I realised that I actually used to listen to him years and years ago, mm. without actually realising it was him. Oh. Which is one of those weird things. And I just recently discovered uh, uh, because he died a, a couple of years ago, a year last year, I think it was. They brought out a, a compilation album where loads yeah. of people actually wrote songs of his songs and one of my favorites which is nightclub hmm. uh i think iggy pop did a version and uh, ben harper did a that's version fantastic. absolutely fantastic and i forgot yeah. what a great song and i've been mean, trying to learn how to play it but yeah. he is no slouch as a piano absolutely player not. so <laughs> I, I, I love him to bits and, and I, yeah. I, I actually i saw him in london some years ago i'm uh, very very fortunate and he was just and, you know, he, he, I mean, he was in his 90s, wasn't he, when he died? Yeah, yeah. And he'd been playing professionally since he was a teenager, and that's all he'd ever done. And, he, you know, and if you listen to some of his stuff with the, with the quartet, it's, it's, it's got such a good sort of swing groove to it. It's just lovely. And he, his storytelling absolutely. and everything. I think he's great. Yeah. No, I mean, absolutely. And uh, uh, it just has a, uh, there's a certain um, joy Mm. that he brings to it. I don't know, he, he just, you know, he talks about him being this kind of smoky nightclub singer, but actually mm. he's got so much energy. <laughs> yeah. You don't feel as though anything sort of is getting him down much. It's just like, whoa, and it's just yeah. extraordinary. Even as you say, when he was 90, he was, he was yeah. still being extraordinary. He must have been, when I saw him, he must have been in his 80s. Yeah. Um, but yeah, great, great. No, I understand that. I'm with you on that one 100%, right? Now. Yeah. And uh, so I suppose if you go about Ho Hoagie Carmichael, yeah. Um, but uh, the uh, yeah, I think the the old uh, some of those old blues players who would mm. just who wouldn't do very much. They would just no. play a, a few chords, and it was all about vocal delivery. It was about as you said, telling a story, and they would just hold down, you know, sort of just sort of basic. <laughs> just go round and round like that yeah. and they would just sing these glorious mm. songs of woe i say yeah. glorious a bit of an oxymoron there but no. uh songs of woe are glorious in yeah. their own way yeah I, uh, no i think you're right and, and and also the thing about this certainly when he started playing it would have been a time where a lot of the music was played for dancing in the same way a lot of the early blues players were were playing for dancing you know they were set saturday night jukebox it juke Duke joint boxes effectively yeah. um so he was the same and and I, I i was reading somewhere about about his life and that's basically where what he started off doing was things like that i suppose it would have been uh, rhythm and blues as much as jazz wouldn't it in those oh, yeah days. i mean he, 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 he skims through the, the two really yes yeah. yeah i think it's um but yeah amazing amazing guy so what about what about um, within influence it's it, within the songs do you think that what's the sort of thing that triggers you off, like that last song? What what triggered that off as a moment? Oh, that song is uh, is a song uh, about um, well, it's, it's a rather sad song about addiction. I hear black rain, mm. uh, but I, I liked it because it was uh, it, it was a song that I um, I discovered. Uh, it's actually a cover, a song that I discovered mm. a while ago, and I. And the original is on guitar, and it's it's quite kind of abrasive, and, yeah. and it has a bit more kind of um, more a country feel to it. Mm. 
So I wanted just to really take it down, so mm. slow it down and give it some of the soul that I thought it deserved. Yeah. Uh, and, and also there's, there was a, a far more lilting melody in there than the original. Uh, I mean, it's often you, you find what that... The, what was the original? Oh, so the original was called Black Rain by, by a chap called Phil Schoenfeld, who is an absolutely terrific... Um, I don't know the name. No, well, when, that's it, when, quite obscure. I, I was thinking, when, when you said Black Rain, I thought that's, that, that did sound vaguely familiar. Um, but not that, that certainly Not that version, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and so um, um, uh, we, we played with him uh, in Prague, where he's based now, last year with the Incubus, oh, and, right. and, and got to meet him there. It was very nice. And we had a, we had a thoroughly good uh, evening down the pub hmm. or a bar in, in Prague, which was a very good thing to do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's, we we were in, in Bratislava a couple of years ago, and it's, it's, I went, we went to a blues club, and there is nothing quite so doer as Eastern European blues. You know, it was just we were in this place, and it was it was cold outside. So everybody's got big coats on, and they, you could still smoke in the bars. So it was like thick with smoke, and <laughs> it was dark, and these guys growling away. It was just fantastic. I loved it. So, what about your own material? Uh, well, um, the, uh, the my own material follows a similar vein. Uh, a lot of a lot of blues. I I take lots of blues shapes, if you will, and, and try and uh, give them my own lilt and uh, elements of uh, I suppose stuff I've been into, which is a sort of an abrasive blues style with a bit of kind of rock element to it. Mm. And um, again, because often I think like a guitar player, uh, I'm I'm putting emphasis in some places where perhaps it shouldn't be. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but this is a percussion instrument, don't you know? So I I feel like I'm bashing every now and again in in a different way that you bash a guitar, of Mm. course. (laughs) Um, So yeah, um, lots of lots of blue shapes, uh, songs uh, about characters. I love songs about characters and songs that tell a story. Often a very simple story mm. of um, a journey. Uh, like the Black Rain is a bit of a journey as well, mm. and um, I just like the sense of the audience. They're listening to the music, and suddenly a line comes up, and I hope it just conjures uh, a little kind of uh, an image or a picture yeah. or a story in their minds. It's I just yeah, just adds that bit more to uh, to a performance. And, um, I think the way I'm, you perform as well is is quite is quite filmic, if that makes sense. It, it's it, you sound like you are actually telling the story, although you're singing it. It sounds yeah. like you know it. It could almost be that somebody else is playing the piano, and you're you could be talking the story over it. I'm, I don't well, know whether it's the form of your lyrics. I don't know, but that that struck me as well the first time I heard you play. It it means that the piano playing is is quite simple mm. because I couldn't possibly do both. One day. I will be doing amazing things with the piano and performing in this amazing thing, but it's a bit more hard. I'm I'm no Mose Allison yet, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, you're right. I I, I love the idea of, of uh, being able to. Uh, it's a performance, I think. You know, in the same way that you know, um, I'd much rather stand up and play piano, but um, um, I haven't quite mastered that yet. You know, stand up as, as the stool gets kicked away, and I, and I go up and down like a sort of a with with tails, <laughs> with uh, with, with Jerry, Jerry, Jerry Lewis with tails, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, excellent. So, do you want to play us one of yours then? Yeah, uh, I'll play a fairly blues one, which is um, uh, what's it called? It's called um, Painted Ocean, and it's about pollution and it's about being lost on a sea of sea of souls, and it's about trying to get back to the one you love and uh it's uh, it's actually got a bit of mose outing because i do a bit of click, <laughs> clicking fingers so be ready for this Excellent. Yep. here we go Step from the ocean, swallowed by a fish. There's a mass of water to be a tsunami. Is. And this great box of water is 
inside this bucket of rhyme There's only you There's only you There's only you There's only you On a painted ocean It's all of blues and greys It's a mass of water The ship's gone down yeah, inside this play box they party Inside this box it's the trash There's only you There's only you There's only you There's only you And when the dirty night gets through me In an unsuspected blight When it's only Thursday should be judgment day There's only you There's only you There's only you There's only you Back in so far away And so across the sea Away from the fuck and the drink and the thing Yeah, I played it ocean There's only you There's only you There's only you Cause when the dirty night gets through me In an unsuspected blight When it's only Thursday When it should be judgment day It's only you It's only you it's only you, it's only you. Excellent, <laughs> excellent. I'm sure I've heard you play that before because it's got a very, very Moe's Ellison feel about it. Uh, lovely. <laughs> I can't help myself. No, I hear absolutely. these things. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's, um, what was it? I get, it's that quote that um, is sometimes attributed to Picasso and sometimes to Michelangelo is that uh, um, am amateurs imitate good artists just steal <laughs> yes but <laughs> no I so think it's, it's 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 got a, it, again it's got that um, uh, that that feel of it being filmic you know the, 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 the storytelling thing which i think is i think it's lovely yeah and i, I think there's uh, the, the nice thing about the piano is it, it's it has that that tone which um people immediately uh, are taken with it uh, I mean, the same way a uh, guitar, but mm. the, the piano takes them just in a little, di little bit of a different direction, mm. and uh, I think uh, I think the ocean and the piano seem to go together yeah. quite well. Do you know what I could hear? I could I could just imagine you playing something like that with um, on, on something like an, I mean, like a, a 19th century harmonium. No, oh, that's a good you idea. Know, like like Ivor <laughs> cut, Ivor Cutler sound, you know? Um, yeah, I think that would be rather nice. I, that's an instrument I've always. I, I I had a friend when I when I was a kid, and the, in their house they had this. It was called a preacher's harmonium, and it was like about probably only about that wide, maybe a little bit more. And it was like a, a, a box. And basically, what happened is that the the, the two bits at the bottom fell out, fl flapped down, and it had that. Those were the pedals, and it was it was built for uh, preachers who travelled in the in the nineteenth century. And it had the most amazing sound. It's just sort of that mournful. Ugh. Anyway, um, so yeah, just the to album, pump it. Yeah, as it goes, as, <laughs> as you drop, as you drop the, the the sort of folded legs down, these bits of string came out as well. It was I'm very, it was very Heath Robinson, but a beautiful <laughs> instrument. I've never seen one since, unfortunately. But you know, I'm still keeping my eye out for one. Um, mm. So the the album is it a series of a series of songs or is it a, a series of songs on a theme or is it? Oh yes, I wanted to make an album as they made albums in the old days, mm. uh, which was. Ten songs, mm -hmm. five either side, because yeah. I made it as an album. Five either side, and it, the idea was you would the, the first track of either side would be mm -hmm. very important. You know, the first opening of either side, All right. and and then it would just tell a story. It would, it would take you on a journey, and in this case, the first side takes you out into the desert, and the second side takes you from the desert back into the into the 
city via right. various things. I mean, rather, um, I don't know, probably ethereal of me. That's that's what I hear. I don't mm-hmm. think every listener maybe gets the same thing. But that was very much, and I wanted it. It's not really such a concept album, but mm-hmm. I don't know. I always remember when when you you get an album and you would listen to it a lot, and you'd have this narrative that you would almost give it give the record. Yeah. And you you know when one song ends and you you wait for the next bit, you, you're always you're always already singing the the first lyric. Yeah, definitely. Uh, because you're you know you 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 absolutely love the record so much um I, I think it's one of those things that that, that certainly I've, I've talked to people of of, of my generation and, and say do you have, have you ever used a shuffle button on a cd player and without exception they all say no that's very Cause, true actually, yeah because the album is built you know is, is built to go from a to b and it's like if i hear a i don't like compilations of like best of albums mm. because, if I hear one track, I think, right, well, I know what's coming next, and it won't be what I'm expecting. And that really not so happen. fast. <laughs> exactly, yeah. not so fast, Mr. Jones. Um, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, that's, I, it. I that's a shame. Talking. The other thing I, I discovered relatively recently that somebody was telling me that when it came to pressing vinyl, the actual um, the amount of detail you can get into the grooves varies across the album as it gets towards the center. It reduces the amount of certain frequencies you can actually get. Oh. So, so they were actually mixed slightly differently as you were getting towards the, 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 the center of the disc, as it were. So track one to five would be going in a certain direction and then five to ten would be going in a similar direction for the other side. Um, yeah. There I, you go. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, uh, I, I'm deliberately trying to shorten the songs so there'd be mm-hmm. plenty of space Hence, five songs either side. And I think each side is about 18 to 19 minutes. Right. Uh, you're allowed about 23, I think. Mm-hmm. After that, you start to you start to squash the, the, yeah. the, the groove too close. Yeah. And it can... Uh, so you, got, you, pressed it, you pressed it on vinyl as well? Oh, yes, it's on vinyl. Oh, right. Okay. You see? Um, Ah, right. Yeah, well, I saw that. I thought that might have just been a blown up CD cover. No, that's, 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 <laughs> that's, that's, that's the real thing. Oh, well done. Oh, yes. And that's it. And, and, I, and I, say, I made sure that, uh, that it would be 90 minutes aside, which is a really good length. I was told by the, the pressing plant. Mm. He said, yeah, try and whatever you do, get it under 23. But if you want it to be sound really good, yeah. aim for about... 18, 19 minutes per side, right. and it'll it'll sound really good. I mean, the technology for pressing records is actually different because uh, I hate to say it, but the equipment they use, while it's analog, mm. the computers are all digital, yeah. and so the precision is actually slightly better mm. because the um, uh, as the, the cutting tool mm. is very stable. Mm. In the old days, it would wobble a bit. Mm. Uh, only you know, we're talking. Yeah. absolute fraction here Millions. so you wouldn't really notice it mm. so actually when they cut records these days it is uh, supposedly slightly better Not right. um although I, I i haven't got the ear for it anymore uh, so i couldn't <laughs> tell you plus my, the, my my record player i've got now isn't as good as the one i had in the 70s and 80s <laughs> uh or more the the, the 80s actually uh because the one i've got now I, I i cannot get it to sound as good and I think it's because I don't have a, uh, the amplifier isn't as good. I had a lovely old Valve Pioneer oh, amplifier, which just... Oh, I had a Pioneer as well. Oh, you see. Yeah. Whereas now I've got some, I've got a Rotel. Right. And, and it's just not as good. What can I say? <laughs> the, the Rotel were made at around the same time. What, oh, on no, I'm sure it's, I'm sure. I think it's quite old and I think it's just... It's just past its uh, its its best. Yeah. They should get better by age, but this is definitely not. So it crackles a bit, and and um, anyway, I won't bore you with that. But um, <laughs> there you go. What can I say? No, I said, no, what you were saying before about the the, the optimum size is uh, the optimum length because mm. that fits in with with what I've been told about this thing about when it gets towards the middle. You're going to be trying to avoid having I don't whatever it is too much bass frequencies or too many you know, yeah yeah so that fits with that so no but I, I'd never realized but I can see what you're saying that now it's even more precise than it was before so of course the yes, other thing a little bit the, the other thing is that um, mm. apparently in the I mean I I've got on, on my wall here um, a, a nineteen a, an album I bought in 1966 which is the original John Mayle Blues Breakers with Eric Clapton the Beano album. And it's a mono one. 
and apparently at that in that era the mono ones were mixed by the the, the, the producer and the stereo mix is quite often done by the assistant because they're only selling like a very very small percentage of stereo <laughs> albums so if you get something that's been remastered from the 60s in stereo it's going to be better than the stereo that you would have had then if you know what i mean <laughs> yes. so, uh, yeah well, so uh, uh, what yeah. about uh, what about other uh, musical ventures are you still doing anything with uh, with young vincent Absolutely, Vincent is is on on the record. All oh, right. Um, his um, his amazing uh, Weissenborn yeah. uh, 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 steel. Um, well, it's not steel, but it? it's a lap um, yeah. slide guitar. It's absolutely so amazing. Mm -hmm. And because he's now discovered that if you put it through these enormous sounding uh, reverb pedals, right, it just disappears off, creates <laughs> a big void. Yeah. A black hole somewhere which just swallows you up mm. and it's just an amazing sound so i use lots of that mm. um i so say we, we yeah definitely got uh, uh vincent aboard uh, on mm. board um and uh, another chap called uh, kevin um kevin uh, davy who's an amazing uh, blues jazz trumpeter oh, uh, yeah. who uh, oh he's fantastic mm. and i got him to, to play some lovely kind of lilting beautiful miles davis-esque um uh sounds uh, and so that's very exciting um uh, but what else funny i uh, yeah got another album by the the inca babies mm. uh and maybe another solo album uh, right. although I, I need to try and persuade my record label that i'm more popular than i am uh <laughs> you know you, you look at your figures on uh, various sort of ways of measuring it these days and of course they measure it by Spotify, which mm. uh, isn't very good. Uh, so I need to uh, need to boost that and then <laughs> persuade them to um, to let me do another record. Um, so yeah, uh, another Ink Babies uh, album. Uh, although we, we we were hoping to, we had a load of gigs lined up this year, and we're hoping we'll still get them next mm. year. They won't have, they won't have changed their minds, or or whenever we can go and play again, of course. Mm. Uh, we don't know yet. I mean, as you say. It, it could be yeah. longer than we, we fear. Yeah. Uh, we have to wait longer than we fear. Rather. Uh, so that remains to be seen. Um, uh, but, you know, it'd be good to have some, uh, some mm. uh, CDs uh, and some product that people can listen to, new stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, give, us, give us another tune. Okay. Uh, this is um, Disappearing, mm. again, off, off the album. And this is about uh, what if James Bond was a woman? Right. And was was uh, still 007, hmm. but a woman. So this is called disappearing, and this is um, this is one of her adventures. Right. Okay. <laughs> castigated from the hymn she she's learned to keep them safely in a hole but she drives a very careful from the favors and the debts she's spending all her efforts in a case of disappearing amongst the shore below the cliffs to the shadows of the night eating out the tides by absent posing to the night into the sea into the drink like sticking to some ink She's a one hour girl, a west hour waiting game. She fills the name, the rest of A, and the very name, and just a rain, like a hitman in her pockets. Stay. But she grows very tired of the favors and the debts. She's spending all her efforts in a case of disappearing amongst the shore below the cliffs, to the shadows of the night, out into the day, into a waiting limousine. Very tired of the 
Famous undertones. She's spending all her efforts in a case of disappearing amongst the shore below the cliffs to the shadows of the night. Out into the day by ebbs and flows into the night. She's a case of disappearing out into the night. She's a case of disappearing. Now to the night, she's a case of disappearing out into the night. She's a case of disappearing out into the night. She drives a car out to the coast. It was a gift from someone hopeful. She has friends and enemies, they're all the same. Any day you now they will find her a different sunset every evening, and she's learned to keep them safely in her heart. She's a case of disappearing out into the night. She's a case of disappearing into the night she's a case of disappearing and out into the night she's a case of disappearing and out into the night great <laughs> love it love it so what you, one of the things that I, I'm, I'm intrigued about these days is, is the way the music industry, or the, no, not the music industry, the way music is going in the sense that, you know, like certainly when, when I was a kid, um, things were, were completely different in terms of how you received music, you know, and the fact that, you know, and I, when an album was announced, you know, like, like the people queuing around the block, you know, to get the, the, you know, the latest Beatles album or whatever, Whereas now the whole thing is that it's no longer restricted to a given package. You know, you can release a track if you want, you know, on Spotify, just on its own. And I think it changes also how, how we listen to music and how we, we hear it. Thoughts on that? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, gosh, um, the, uh, the, the notion of, uh, of streaming mm. uh, whereby... You don't so much uh, have an idea of an artist apart from maybe one track and a picture of them and maybe a, a YouTube video. So you have this very small little window of, of what a, an artist is. And, um, and literally you scroll to the next one who has one song and a picture and a video and you go like this, boom, boom, boom. And after a bit, it's just a blur. Mm. And um, I mean, I, I ask um, people, uh, you know, what, what I'm, I have students at the, the yeah. Manchester Film School. I say, you know, what are your favourite artists? Yeah, who do you really like? And you know, they don't really have. They they can't name you more than a three or four, and they'll, you know, they'll they'll they they know tunes and they know, and the but the ones they like are not necessarily ones with big outputs, just ones that uh, have risen. To the top of this, this rather kind of thin uh, canon of work, if you like, mm. and um, you know everyone knows who. I mean, I mean to be fair, I mean the, the ones that get up there mm. uh, do make a lot of music, uh, but the rest of them don't. I mean, you know, it always amazes me that um, uh, Taylor Swift keeps mm. uh, making the same record over and over again. Um, <laughs> But which, which is great because that's what she does. Mm. And um, but then she, you know, she's right top of the pile. You know, mm. she's way up there, and uh, people know who she is. But there's come to the stage where by those songs, rather sort of, unless you're a real fan, mm. you can't. I mean, I I've listened to a fair amount of tennis out of curiosity, but I still can't sing you one. Right, because yeah, yeah. Um, it's so quick and it's gone. It's, it's, it's it comes and it goes. You know, mm. even listen to the radio. Um, 
uh, the, the the turnover is quite big because it's almost as if you know you've yeah. got to play more stuff and there's stuff well, I, that does I think come, you've highlight, yeah. highlighted something there. One of the things that I remember, and it's got to be 25 years ago now, and, and there was I can't think what it was called. There was a um, uh, an early evening pop music thing on, um, and it was very much pop music on on Channel Four. And there was a band on, and the the interviewer said, "So you know what, what's going on with the new release?" And the first thing the artist said was, "We've just finished the video, and it's just fantastic." And I thought, "Well, hang on a minute. You know, if if you if you're interviewing an author, you wouldn't want to talk about the cover, would you? You know, it's um, it, it's but now that it's the package, you know, and the package involves." You know, whatever is the the general the appearance, the, the in some cases the products that they're endorsing, um, but but the other thing for me is this sort of simple quantity of music that people hear rather than listen to. Yes, you're absolutely right, and uh, you know, um, uh, there there is little time it seems to me to sit down and really absorb. Mm. Um, I mean, I'm old school because when I when I like something, I mm. will listen to it from beginning to end because so I want to know the full range of what they've done on this particular yeah. record. Yeah. Uh, and so, and then once I've listened to it, if I like it, I will listen to the whole thing again, um, which is rather sort of old school, isn't it? Because you would buy the vinyl, you'd stick it on, and you, you'd play it a couple of times because you, you weren't quite sure the first time, so mm. you'd listen to it again. Um, but the, I, I don't know, do people have the same amount of time? I know I, I didn't play any games. I didn't play any computer games in those days. And if I wasn't listening to records, I was outside kicking a football or playing a guitar. Uh, you know, so, a simple folk. Yeah, I think you've, you've, you've talked about several things in there. First of mm. all, it's the amount of stuff that is available. Yeah. I mean, certainly... You know, as I mentioned before, when somebody released an album, it was an event. You know, the only th mm, the oh, yeah. clo close to that in the last 20 years has been Harry Potter, the next Harry Potter book coming out, you know, where people are queuing around the block. But that used to happen regularly in, in the 60s, certainly. And um, it, 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 the, an, an album was an event as well. I mean, I I went to live abroad in, 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 in the mid-90s and... I didn't have a big record collection, but I sold it all. Mm. And uh, but I remembered when I was selling them, and I, I sold them to a dealer, and we we just went through a book and uh, the Penguin book, and he said, oh, "I'll give you half whatever the value." was said, "Okay, that's fine." So, and we went through it, and every album, I could remember something about it, where yeah. I bought it, who yeah. I was with when I bought it, the fact I'd seen the gig the night before, or the fact I was going to see the gig the week after, you know, all those sort of things. Um, Whereas now, as things like M MP3s, etc., have have no, uh, th th there's no, there's no sense of ownership. I mean, similarly, no. similarly yeah. with books and Kindle, you know, it's 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 access rather than ownership now. Mm -hmm. I, I think I think people will will remember songs uh, yeah. where they were and stuff, but that actual that actual uh, collecting and mm -hmm. owning. Owning that music, well, owning it, I suppose you did own it in a way, didn't you? Because mm. it, that record was yours, and when you listened to it, it meant something to you, yeah. especially because it came from that piece of plastic and you had that connection and that mm. relationship with it, mm. far more so uh, than I think if you, you only really have uh, a relationship with maybe one one tune. Mm. Um, or and indeed, I, Certainly, you yeah. would be choosing when you listen to it. You yeah. Know, whereas, whereas if you're listening to something on the radio or on a streaming system, the streaming system is actually generating stuff for you. you know, yes, it, you, it you can. can yeah. You get, get to the end of a you know of, of an album and suddenly it's playing the radio station of that artist and it yes. related artists and this and that and the other, yes. and suddenly you're no longer in control of what you're listening to. No, very much so. I mean, you uh, you have to you have to make your own playlists, which is what some people do, or or sign up to premium. Uh, the premium uh, streaming uh, service, and so you've got control over it. Yep. You need to pay to have control, yep. otherwise they tell you what you want. Yes, it's which all is a shame. Like George, it's a bit George Orwell, really, isn't it? <laughs> yes, <laughs> we really get to that point. <laughs> it's, um, but it's interesting, and, and but also I think there's a sort of there's almost like um, a, a split. I mean, like like for example, you know, the sort of open mic circuit that we're both familiar with in Manchester. Mm. There's a whole bunch of people out there um, doing stuff and writing stuff and writing 
simple songs that design, I don't mean simply in a derogatory way, no, no. that can be simply performed, which, which you know, was happening in the, in, in the 60s, well, it's happened since time immemorial, really. Um, but it's just the fact that because his music constantly around, that we, maybe people actually are less, is it word discerning? I'm not sure. Um, but discerning just in the sense of do you know which, when one stops and another one first starts? You know? Yeah, that's, it is interesting, yeah. Um, uh, I mean, the actual idea of, of an album, though, I think is, is going to be, um, will slowly phase its way out because... Um, you know, with, with, they tell you if you want to have success with Spotify, don't release an album, just release single after single after single and mm. hammer that single. Mm. And if possible, don't make that single too long because mm. then you can uh, put it into repeat play mm. and you can generate overnight. You can generate a, if it's two and a half minutes, you can probably generate a couple of thousand plays mm. if you just leave it on overnight. This is the advice I was given, I might add, by a, is that right? a, a Spotify. Yeah, this, and I'm thinking, well, that's, I said, I'm, 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 so, well, <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of not very happy with that because no. nobody listened to it. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was a tree that fell in the forest and nobody yeah. saw it and nobody heard it, so yeah. it didn't happen as yes. far as I can say, uh, which, which was a, I mean, yeah, but it gets your numbers up. I said, mm. you know, it's like, uh, I remember I read the um, Bob Geldof uh, biography uh, oh, yeah. last year, and he was talking about going around the record shops, buying copies of, of, of uh, I Don't Like Mondays and, mm. um, and Rat Pack just to mm. get it into the charts. They would come out with 50 copies of it. Mm. And after a bit, they said, hi, oh, Bob. You're not buying another another fifty copies <laughs> of uh, of Boone Tower Rats, are you? Because their 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 manager told them to do it. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I but, know, it's, but it's similarly, been similarly, a long time before that, George Gershwin was doing it. Oh, well, there you are. You see. I mean, George Gershwin used to go around the music shops in in New York, and and obviously they were selling sheet music. Sheet and music. He, yeah. And he he'd go in and he'd look to see what was selling, and he'd flick you know the because it was massive. The volume of work that he produced, and he'd go through and say, oh, well, well, obviously that one sold well, so I'll write some more of those. Uh, and then the ones that weren't selling so well, he'd bring to the front and put them in there. <laughs> um, so, you know, that sort of. And, and I, 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 I did a thing some years ago with a friend um, about songwriting in terms of the Great American Songbook. And um, we, uh, we, ca we called it Which Came First. Because there's a, a legendary story about the Sammy Khan, the songwriter, being interviewed by a, um, uh, uh, a journalist who says, um, which came first, the words or the music? And Sammy Khan said, the phone call. Because yeah. <laughs> they, you know, they, they were all writing to order. So, um, <laughs> yes. But, um, yeah, so it's been there a long time. Listen. It's been great talking to you. Would you like to finish off this session with a, another tune? Yes, why not? Uh, let's have a quick think. Um, this is another one off, uh, off the album. This is called yep. uh, Into the Storm. Okay. And it goes like this. So it doesn't go like this. <laughs> I've got to get my things in order. i got to make sense of affairs. i got to answer to the knock on my door. And of my chest and up my telltale heart. How, 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 how do you close your eyes at night? How, 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 how do you sleep in the stone? Oh, oh, oh. With the door blown clean off its hinges, I'll say goodnight. Into the storm, oh, to the storm, oh, into the storm, oh, into the storm, oh. Storm blowing down, fire on the Wi-Fi, making my life. A little harder. It's been raining for the very day I was born. Into a coffin shape. How, 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 how do you close your eyes at night? How, 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 
Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us, and uh, best of luck with with all this stuff. Keep me posted on, on what you're up to. Certainly. And hopefully, will. when when all this is over and done with, we'll um, we'll get together and have a, a real life chat as opposed to absolutely. <laughs> yes, we yeah. yeah. We have long uh, deserved a, a drink together. So yeah, definitely. We'll just do yes, that. we shall do that. Cheers, Good. Harry. Thanks, mate. Brilliant. Excellent. Great songs. Great. Songs. Really. I don't know. There's, there's something mysterious about them. I like the the songwriting stuff. I think it's brilliant. So that's it from us this week. Um, bit of a, a confusion at the beginning, but uh, but we got there in the end. So um, I'll be back next week. Now, just to let you know what's coming up for the next next month. Next week we've got Emily Fremgen, um, who's joining us from New York. Um, the week after we've got Chris Taviner. Now, Chris was one of the first people who did this with me, actually, on a live stage. Um, nearly, oh my gosh, nearly two years ago now. So he'll be good value. He's always got some great stories to tell. The week after, we've got George Borowski, the legend that is George Borowski. And after that, um, again from the States, Rachel Coburn. Now, Rachel is a, um, uh, a blues guitar player and singer and songwriter uh, who's based in Florida. Um, Leslie and I met her. Uh, in um, where we, in Clarksdale, in Mississippi, four years ago, and uh, she was I was invited to sit in with the band, and she was also sitting in with the band, so we did some stuff together. And uh, great singer, great guitar player, and nice lady. So that's that's the next month on on talking songs. So thanks for dropping in, and uh, look after yourselves, stay safe, and uh, see you next week. Cheers, bye. <laughs>